Awesome, so should be good now. All right, and then I'm going to share my screen. Uh, in particular, I'm going to share. And also, if you think that VODs are better, I do have some that I could probably find, but they would be slippy files. Uh, I don't necessarily have to. Um, I, f uh, I find it's just the best to go over like VODs in general, just because then we can target specific issues that you have. And even though you might have a good, you know, like, you know, feeling on what you need to work on, you might still not, there's might be certain things you're not thinking about, right? Yeah, I got you. Um, and especially when your game plan, like you just told me, is essentially <laughs> wall with aerials and then run up grab. There's definitely... And I don't even follow that. I just aerial in. <laughs> and so you basically, basically, you don't even have a, 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 a game plan then. Um, no, fuck. No. <laughs> let, me, let me go to Google Docs. Even though I don't normally say it, I, I like to write down notes um, or Google Drive. I'm going to write down some anyways. New uh, Google Docs. Um, is there any particular matchup you want to focus on right now quickly for your game plans? I mean, I can give you a more ar overarching kind of understanding of what to think about when you're trying to create your own game plans, or we can go more specifically on a, on a, on a, on a uh, specific matchup, and then I can then branch it out to more ge ge like something more general. What do you want? I can do either. Um... I guess I would say Sheik then, because Sheik kind of uh, encapsulates the playstyle that gives me the most issue, which is just really patient people, because uh, I get a lot out of just scrapping and getting opportunities off of that and whatever with like normal spaces and stuff like that. But if somebody's really patient, I just get eaten up because I approach poorly. <laughs> okay, when you approach, what do you... Like, for instance, let's say... Uh, I'll, I'll pull up actually Slippy. This will probably be easier if I just move around and, and go like that. Uh, what is it called? Slippy. Dolphin EXE. Perfect. Don't worry, you can't see it right now, but I'll pull it up in a second. Uh, dolphin. Go. Why is that? Why is that messed up? That was perfectly fine earlier, and now it's all <laughs> messed up. God, I love yeah, it. I think a big thing with my problem with Sheik too is I just never get to play any of them. Honestly, there's none on unranked, and that's like the entirety of my experience. <laughs> True. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, honestly, I had to have that feeling myself, and I'm trying to like you know directly play Sheiks online, and I can't even do that because there's literally no Sheiks that try to practice it seems like uh, like they're an, they're an enigma man like they're 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 literally just not there it's crazy um let me know if you can see this yeah okay perfect i'm gonna just move around and i'm gonna that way we can kind of actually let's direct connect that's actually a better way of doing it so what's your code Ass man zero. <laughs> Ass man zero. All right, right on. Um, I'll be chic that way. Uh, Ass man. Wow, actually, Ass man zero. That's amazing. It was. I wanted it to be fat dumpy zero, but it was too long. Right so. on. Right, right on. Uh, mine's Mateo uh, zero, which you can see. You can close like the stream if you want. Um, probably best if you do. All right, yeah, I, my controller's just not working in Slippy right now for some reason. Classic. But essentially, um, what I'm going to try to do with you is I'm going to try and change your perspective to things that aren't you doing in, like, specific, spe like specifically. Because right now, what you're specifically saying, I'm walling, and then I'm running up and grabbing. And, like, that's your, you know, pseudo game plan, which, cause I, and I call it pseudo because you don't really follow it. But that's essentially your, your pseudo game plan right now, right? Now, how I think of matchups is I don't think of matchups as, oh, I need to wall, I need to do this. What I think of matchups is I think of what do I want to, what do I want, what do I not want, what do they want, and what do they not want. So, for instance, with Sheik, what does Sheik want? Sheik wants a grab. Well, what are the common ways for Sheik to get a grab? She can boost grab, right? She can shield one of your arrows and grab. She can CC grab. And that's uh, basically 
the majority of it, right? Now, yes. if she can get a knockdown, that means she can get a tech chase, right? But at low percents, she's essentially looking for a grab because if I forward tilt you at this percent and you're on the ground, you can CC it. You can, you know, hold down for a sec, you can CC it. I try and dash attack you or whatever, you can CC it. I try and, you know, even up smash you, you can CC it. Down smash, you can CC it. So essentially, all of my options at low, even like low even mid percent are beaten by CC or by shield. So for me, my, my biggest goal is to get a grab. So you have to think in your mind, okay, Sheiks, what do they want? They want a grab, okay? But then that, that essentially means I don't want to get grabbed. You see how easy that is? Already we know what Sheik wants and what we don't want. Now, what do we want? We want, basically at low percent, we want either a stomp or we want a knee or something like that. Something that can either lead into grab or if they're a little bit higher enough percent can lead into another move. Now, at really low percent, you pretty much have to go for either a stomp into a grab or um, or just like a raw grab, essentially, right? So essentially what you want now is you want to stomp and a grab. So what Sheik's going to be looking for is she's going to be looking for um, stomp and grab, if they're good enough. In actuality, most Sheik's aren't that good, and they're just, you know, they're thinking too hard about what they want. They're like, I want grab, and that, they tunnel vision on that, actually. A lot of Sheik's tunnel vision on that. So now you understand, okay, Sheik wants a grab. We don't want to get grabbed. We want stomp, and we want grab. That's as simple as it, as it is, okay? Now... There's more to it than that, but if you focused on just not getting grabbed, uh, you're that's gonna go a long way. Now, it's difficult to just say, oh, just avoid getting grabbed, right? That you you can't just say, oh, just avoid getting grabbed because what does that lead to? Well, that like how many different situations there are in melee, right? So what I try to think about is I think about like I said, the common ways that sheik will get grabbed, right? So she'll either boost grab me. A lot of sheiks like to like dash dance, right, and then boost grab in. A lot of sheiks, you know, let's say you, you try to approach me with like a knee or something. They'll like, like here, like right over here. Like that, right? That's uh, what I get hit by. Get hit by, right? Of the time. So what that means is essentially your knees are too predictable or they're poorly spaced. Now that knee was that knee was poorly, poorly spaced more so than predictable just because obviously I told you to, to hit me then, right? It was more so poorly spaced. So what you want to do is you want to either overshoot completely. So try and like knee me. Yeah, like that, right? It, obviously not that hard, but if you need if you need that hard, like if you go that far, I can't shield grab you. And there's no way I'm gonna no way I'm gonna narrow to shield, right? Um, because it lasts too long. Or you can do like a more shallow knee. So try and you know, one sec, go like try and like overshoot or not under undershoot like knee kind of and, and just barely hit me, right? Like that. See, that's a good knee, right? Now, I wouldn't necessarily stop and then go. I, whenever I approach Sheik, I want to go full speed, right? And then, and then, and then I change my aerial drift while I'm in the air, right? But I kind of have an idea already of where I want to hit. And to be honest, almost majority of the time, if you're already going to be approaching from that far away, it's much better to overshoot than it is to undershoot, because you cover way more space. Knee is out a lot longer, right? So okay. essentially, now, now you can understand. Okay. Overshooting's better. Uh, Sheik wants a grab, right? She she wants a grab. How does she get a grab? She either shields, she either boost grabs, or she CCs, right? Because you can hit me, you know, with you can even hit me with a knee. Hit me with a knee, and I could probably, like, I I I messed up there, but I could grab you, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, here, try it again. One one more time. I might be a little bit too high percent now. No, see, even then, right? So obviously, if a Sheik's gonna be, you know obviously crouching just stomp instead right and you can you can see it. i mean most of the time you'll just if you look remember looking at the screen is very good a lot of people don't do that a lot of people just kind of you know too stuck on your own movement right if you look at the screen and kind of notice what the other player is doing you you can change what you're doing before you do it you know instead of just oh i'm gonna knee i have to knee now you know what i mean um yeah. but anyway so now we basically have the idea of okay she wants she she wants grab how, there's three different ways that she can get grab and that's what we want to avoid falcon now from what falcon wants like i said you want to stomp you want to knee or you want to grab now at a certain range grab is grab is unreactable so right there that's unreactable hell even a little bit further i think is almost unreactable like like yeah once you dash like the distance where you can immediate dash grab that's unreactable so keep that keep that in mind right uh that's it's in, really really good when sheik doesn't have as much room 
because that way you can catch them. They can't dash back, right? So if I'm like right here, I can't really move anywhere, right? I can I can do this kind of you know crap, which you can you know CC like. And what that's another thing, if you're gonna go for that kind of grab, you could actually do the grab and then hold down while you're doing it, right? So here go. And it's it's weird. So put the grab in and then and then and then hold down immediately. It's it's awkward to do, but once you get it. Right now you're above ASDI down percent, but at the same time though, if you're low enough percent, that can lead into you punishing them. So just yeah, remember, like, you, uh, you can hold like hold down more. Holding down is really really good. Like whenever you throw moves and you're stuck in them, hold down. You you know you go you go across like the stage with a knee, hold down. You go for a grab, hold down. Now uh, because I buffer and I don't know if you're aware of this, but you can buffer down throw with C stick, right? Uh, I know about it. Okay. I I, I love doing that because the beauty of it is I can once I start once I immediately once I immediately throw out a grab I'm already holding down and what's great about that is that in that situation what I was just talking about you're not gonna be able to choose CC so using the gray stick or the C stick is the exact same because it's ASDI down at that point right so if you're going for that grab in the corner if you do a jump cancel grab and immediately hold down You'll be able to you'll be able to ASDI down, right? So here, kill kill yourself for a second, and then come back. So now now try it again. I did too late. One sec. Uh, three, two, one, go. Right? See that? See see how you yeah right? And then, and then you immediately can act out on. It. Sorry, I paused because you didn't get the punish after, but you get what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, I got you. Right. So holding down, amazing, amazing. Every time you want to shield. Think instead, I'm going to hold down. And if you're going to try and work on that, try to just go on unranked and literally don't shield at all and just hold down. That's another thing I, I really want to emphasize is that anytime you want to incorporate something into your gameplay, spam the shit out of it. If it is if it is in lieu of a, another move, and by that I mean replacement of another option, don't do that other option that you were trying to replace at all. So, for instance, with CC, literally just if you're above or you're below like 70%, just hold down. Don't if anytime you have the you know inclination to shield, just hold down instead. And after a while, you'll start to develop, you know, or you'll start to understand rather when is it good for me to hold down versus shielding, right? Uh, let's go back. Right, and, 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 and the thing is, is, a lot of people don't understand that all, all the good players, from Zane to Mango to Leffen, the way that they incorporate things isn't by, you know, incorporating everything at once. They, If you watch Zane, some of his streams, he's just spamming one thing for, like, a whole game or a whole couple games. Like, I, earlier today, I saw him spamming uh, side B against a Sheik, just trying to see if he can do side B and then up tilt or side B into up air. or side, Like, he's just spamming it and just trying to see what works and what doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. um so that's really crucial it's like okay i never know how to cc okay well then then try to literally only cc instead of shielding i don't know how to approach properly okay then just keep approaching and just literally like obviously like be a little bit more patient with your timings like this time instead of one dash dance do two do two dash dances instead of you know uh two dash dances just do one dash dance and go in with a you know full drift knee or the next time do three right and then kind of see what your opponent's doing every time you do that right and eventually you'll start to realize like oh this is kind of a better timing for me to approach and then you start to understand like oh if i wait a little bit longer if i wait a little bit less it's easier to approach right because the thing is your opponent especially chic is going to be trying to like wall you off right they're going to be trying to get in close so they're either their goal is either they're going to try and wall you off if, if they feel like you're going to be approaching a lot Right, you'll see a lot of sheiks kind of do this kind of stuff, right? Or they'll, or they'll do like short hop, you know, fair or or whatever. Or they'll, you know, four tilt, and then sometimes sheiks will just tr you know try and, you know, come in with a boost grab. But essentially, they're either walling or they're trying to approach you with a grab, right? And if they're walling, they they might you know choose to shield instead. And so if you wait a little bit, you might catch them after they threw out a walling move, and then they're forced to shield. And if you space it properly, they're in a position where they can't punish you. And so they're, they're, in, a, they're in a spot where now they have to choose, uh, uh, they either mess up and like shield grab, let's say, or they choose like an area to shield, in which case, more likely than not, it's not going to strong hit you. So you can hold down immediately after and get a punish. 
So you have to leverage the basically the strength of Falcon's aerials and uh, on shield when spaced correctly. Because even stomp, if you if you drift in properly, like even overshoot and you go past them, they can't punish you for it. If you hit them behind their shield with stomp, they can't hit, they can't hit, they can't get you. Or say for instance, you need like like you did that, the, did that before where you did that like overshoot near where you went too far or that I can't really grab you. Especially if you do it nicely spaced. Now, the best way, in my opinion, is to do... Here, I'm going to go... Let's go FD because it's easier. The best way I like to do, let's say, an uh, overshoot knee, is I like to so go across the stage. Just stand, like, stand there. I like to do it where they do no fast fall. And I'm trying to basically hit the corner. You see how I'm trying to hit the corner there? Because mm -hmm. if I can hit them all the way such that they have to go off stage, they're going to do an option where it's not good. And the beauty of it, too is if I go that far and I don't do a fast fall, I can choose to fast fall after. So I have the option to undershoot if I feel like, huh, you know what, I kind of have a feeling that even though I went for this option now and committed, I can now choose to, to um, fast fall it. So, I mean, it's always, almost always better just to approach with knee and, 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 and go as far as you can. But it gives you the option, gives you the option to fast fall, right? But most of the time, you just want to do just want to do this, and that's really good. And now, and now, sometimes you'll be like, "Well, I'm getting stuffed," and it's like, "Okay, now you know you have to throw your aerial sooner, or instead, now you know to, to instead of arrow like running up arrowing, run up and hold down, right? And that that's the mix up, right? So now instead of you approaching with an aerial, you're running up and holding down, and that's and that's broken. Ro running up and holding down on a sheik that's walling you. Oh my god, they swap they swap they uh, like they. You know, fair you, rob grab, or you know, even you can even do a knee out sometimes if they're if they're really bad, right? But mostly what you're gonna do is you're gonna run up grab after, right? Um, but yeah, honestly, approaching with knees really good. I like to I like to approach with nair as well. But the thing is with nair is it's not strong. It can be cc'd and it doesn't last as long as as knee, right? Knee is honestly probably your best move to approach with. It's out for long. It's really good for trades. Um. It's the, it has the ability to, you know, go over or basically hit higher, kind of. Like, I find, I don't know, I, I catch people way more, you know what I mean, with knee than I ever do with, uh, with Nair. And it's also really deceiving. I don't know if it's just me, but knee, it seems a lot smaller than it is. But that motherfucker can hit, man. It has, it has a lot more range than people realize, especially when you, it's so active, right? It's active yeah. for so long. You can cover literally... God, you can cover like almost a, a quarter of FD. And FD is a huge stage, a quarter of FD's width with knee. Now, it not the the entire thing isn't, you know, strong hit, but it's definitely going to hit something at least, right? And especially for someone who keeps falling you with aerials, it's going to catch somebody eventually. And that trade, while either lead the other, you know, bad DI and you can edge guard or you can get even get a double knee. And a double knee against Sheik is amazing. If you can get double knee versus Sheik or a stomp knee or stomp up air to knee, and then you just you can literally just edge guard Sheik to death. Okay, so let's reiterate. So the game plan, now, instead of thinking about specific, like I want to reiterate, instead of thinking about specific actions like you were doing before, like I'm going to wall and then I'm going to run up grab, think about, and I really wanted to make this clear, think about what do I want, what do I not want. What does she? What does the opponent want, and what they? What do they not want? And think about at low percent, mostly low to mid percent. And then as, as as you go on, like, you know, instead of CCing, change CC to you know shield, right? Because if they're high enough percent, they can't CC. So for instance, like, what I was talking about before, where Sheik wants a grab, you know, when you, you're when she's at low percent, when you're at high percent, or sorry, if she's at high percent and she wants a grab, and you're at low percent. She's not going to go for CC because she can't CC anymore. So she's going to go for shield, right? So you start to lose certain options as you get higher percent. But the idea behind what the person wants is still the same, right? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Um, so essentially, think about, again, the dis what they want, what they don't want, what you want, what you don't want. Now, let's, let's move on to, like, Falco, okay? Uh, what do you want at low percent against Falco? Uh either a hard knockdown and try to get the tech chaser i look for grabs right okay what do you not want to happen to you 
uh, to just eat a million lasers. <laughs> Actually, lasers aren't bad. Think, 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 think a little bit differently. What's, what's even worse than getting hit by lasers? Uh, a pillar combo. Yeah, or, 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 more, or, or more specifically, um, what leads to the pillar combo? Uh, downer. What bef- after that, more so what, what actually, because downer doesn't lead, what actually pops you up? The launcher. Oh, the shine. Shine, right? So your goal, you can get hit by dares and not get shine, and you'll be fine. You can get hit by nares and, and be fine. You can get hit by a billion lasers and you're fine, but the instant you get hit by shine, you're in a position where you have a lot less options, right? Yeah, I'd just get taken for a ride taken, by Falco. Taken for a ride, right? So you got to understand that with Falco, getting hit by lasers is fine. You know, maybe not getting, you know, stuck down or whatever is not the greatest thing. But if you can avoid getting shined, Falco has a much, much harder time then. A hard, a lot harder. Like, if you literally, Falco approaches you and then you roll safely, what's Falco going to do? Or, or or rather, you run away, uh, uh, like, you hit take laser, run away, what's Falco going to do? Or, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, people are very scared uh getting hit on shield by falco when in actuality if you just wait a second you can just roll out of it and even then if they're covering it it's still it causes them to do more work right so instead of them you know instead of you kind of giving them a free shine you're now making them work for it and if they don't get that shine it, it makes it even harder for them to rack up percent and kill you right so now yeah. now, now we know essentially okay falcon wants a hard knockdown or a grab right Falco wants a shine. What, what Falco doesn't want is the same thing. Doesn't want to get heart knocked down and doesn't want to get grabbed. And then what they do want, they they want a shine. Now, specifically, they're probably more so thinking, like, I'm going to get a Nair into a shine. But it really comes down to them getting a shine. In our case, it really just comes down to getting a shine. So if you can avoid getting a shine, that's really important. And like I said, let's, let, like, let's say I'm Falco, right? And I'm, I'm uh, you know, you're shielding. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to shine you and you just roll right or you wave dash your shield that's great right but the instant i get a shine now you're in a combo right right and 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 honestly in my mind if if you're really shook just roll don't try to wave dash your shield because every time i try to wave dash your shield i almost always i almost always get caught by a shine because they'll they'll be they'll be changing up their timings and then i'm i'm, I'm screwed right whereas a roll rolls much easier because i can buffer roll right I can buffer roll. It's not dependent on my execution, which whereas wave dash at a shield is. I have to time that. So make it easier on yourself, right? Now, obviously, as time goes on in the set or your games, you'll start to see kind of when you can wave dash at a shield. But in the beginning of the set, I'm never wave dash at a shield versus a Falco. Not at all. Screw that. I'm not trying to get punished for, you know, I get shined. I get, you know, pillar combo. I'm dead. Especially on FD. Are you kidding me? I'm, I, could, I could literally die if I mess up my SDI. Whereas if I just hold shield for a second and then I roll, I can reset, potentially reset to neutral. And at worst, I'm making them work harder, right? I'm making them work harder and instead uh, potentially or hopefully avoiding a shine and, and hopefully prolonging my stock, right? And at the same time, frustrating the Falco player. Imagine every time you approach a Falcon and he's rolling out perfectly and I don't get a single like, proper combo. That's got to be hella annoying, right? And that's also got to be very taxing. It's very taxing, right? You only have so much stamina that you can use, and it's very taxing. Um, so yeah, that's essentially how I think of game plans. You get what I'm getting at now? You yeah. have what uh, what I want, what I don't want, what they want, what they don't want. And then from there, everything gets a little bit more complicated, right? Then you get into the actual interactions that make up neutral and the interactions that essentially, you know, make up edge guarding and punish and stuff like that. But the the core of, of the game in my mind is what do they want? What do they not want? What do you want? What, are the, what, what, what do they not want? Or what do you want? Or whatever, right? Um, what else is there? But essentially, that's that's the gist of it, right? Um, besides that, a lot of times, like, if you're, like, let's say, for instance, you have trouble, you know, approaching Sheik, right? A lot of times with Sheik, it's just waiting a second, like I was saying. Instead of you, you know, immediately coming in, just wait a second. And now you got to be careful dash dancing in a range that's too close because I can easily I can easily come up and bo- like boost grab you, right? Like if we're in this range right here, I can easily dash attack you unreactable, right? Or or whatever. Whereas if you're a little bit further away like here, that's a little bit harder for me to grab you, right? Now you're a little bit too close, like a little bit further away like right right around there, right? That's a good range cuz I can't really I can't dash attack you. 
So if you think stay out of dash attack range, that's really good if you're in raw neutral, right? Um, sometimes I even stand really far away because I, I'm, I, I don't want to deal with their stuff. And then once I kind of have a better feeling, then I kind of get, get a little bit closer, right? And then I start approaching. Now, I want to reiterate, or want to not reiterate, but I want to I want to state specifically that um, you can dash dance forever, but the people who, in my mind, really set you know really set the pace of the game are the people who aggress so if you never aggress like you can definitely aerial in place like falcon's really good at you know walling out but if you never if you never really approach you're never able to set the pace of the game and you'll never really in my mind i always feel that i won't actually feel comfortable like you, have you ever played versus a sheik and you feel very uncomfortable you're like, I don't know what to do here. I'm kind of worried about here, this and that. Like, I feel like the Sheik has, I like, can do everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That that feeling can be alleviated if you try to pressure the Sheik a little bit more. Safely pressure, right? If you set the yeah. pace of the game a little bit more. Now, that's more difficult, right? Because, like, you have to space your knees properly when you approach. You have to mix up your timings well when you approach and stuff like that. But overall, as long as you you know, aggress even a little bit, um, you'll start to kind of feel a little bit more comfortable playing against playing against a Sheik, right? But if you always let the Sheik make the decisions and you never really do anything other than run up grab, you're going to feel very, very, very um, uncomfortable. Um, besides that, let me see. We could play some Sheik games, Sheik Falcon, if you really wanted to. Um, and I can, just, you know, point out some things for you if, you if you'd like. That might be that might be really good. Um, what do you what do you say? Or, or we uh, can have a specific set to watch, or or if you just want to play kind of any character and see if you pick up anything about my gameplay in general. I don't. You don't have to run Sheik necessarily. Well, it's up to you. I can, I, I have I have buttloads of secondaries. Um. I play the most against spaces, obviously, because that's just the nature of everything. Um, I'm relatively comfortable against Fox because like Fox just doesn't hit me for as long as Falco seems to. So if you want to run Falco, so I just want to say I, I I have something to say about what you said there. Um, it appears to be um, I already had this feeling, but it, it really appears to be that you have a lack of patience. Yes. Like an extreme lack of patience because even just Falco comboing you, you seemed like you sounded very, like it seemed like you're very antsy about it, right? Yeah, because it's like that is what my games end up being is like, like I said, what the people who give me issues in particular are people like Sheik who they like to stay in place and just be very like defensive because I get impatient. I go in poorly and I just eat a a ton of damage for it or i get tech chase forever mm -hmm. um when i play against people where it's a very aggressive match i'm way more comfortable like you were saying because like I, i'm we're flying around we're trading hits whatever like i just feel good in that moment but patience is still definitely like an issue okay um so you're definitely gonna have to work on that because melee is all <laughs> patience especially singles this entire game is built off of who's got the smaller genitalia <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but essentially it comes down to who's 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 got the most patience, um, and uh, it makes the reason why someone like Armado is so good. Obviously, he's you know amazing at everything, but one of the things that he was really good at is being patient. He's really good at, at, at being patient and biding his time and choosing good spots. A lot of people forget that in melee, like you, especially myself when I first started you tend to choose to fight in spots you shouldn't fight, right? Like, you think, I'm going to fight here because I, I want to. Well, unfortunately, that's not how the game works. You don't fight where you want to. You fight where your best spots are. And I really want to make that clear. You're fighting where your best spots are. You might think, oh, I, I you know, I can catch uh, Sheik here with this. And it's like, is that a good spot to, to do that? And you really have to ask yourself, you know, when you're watching your videos, like, back, is that a good spot? Or if you can, if you can remember the situation after you, you know, after a stock or whatever, think about, was this a good, was this an advantageous situation for me? Was this a good spot to fight in? Because when you're fighting versus good players, 
they're literally only fighting you in good spots. If they're really good, they're only trying to attack you in good spots. They're never trying to attack you off, off some risk or anything. Like, they're not just, you know... And they're really intentionally trying to hit you in a certain way. So I want to make that clear, right? Um, but I, well, getting back to what I was going to say before with Armada and Patience, his Patience is Im impeccable. His Patience was literally the m one thing, if, if I had to say, like, tell somebody to look for in Armada's play, outside of, obviously, you know, his ability with Peach and Fox and whatnot, is his Patience. And that's something you're going to have to work on yourself. And now... Um, there's many ways to work on patience. Um, I think the one thing a lot of people who have issues with patience fail to recognize is that you're playing somebody who's also a human, right? You're playing someone who, who feels the same things you feel, enjoys you know similar things that you do, and is playing the game to enjoy the game. Now, you might have issues with that, and if you do and you can never get over that, then there's really no point in trying to improve in Melee because you're going to be stuck with your own ego and you're not going to be able to improve. But if you can try to think about how your opponent feels, even for a second while you're playing, and understand that, hey, this person's doing what they're doing because they're enjoying the game, not because they're, you know, have a small genitalia or because they're an <laughs> asshole, um, you start to understand that, like, it for yourself... And also understand, put into the fact that it, you want to attack when you're in good positions. If you put both those in perspective, it makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of wait a little bit longer. And then you also understand that this person who is, you know, playing very defensively, that yes, they're playing something in a way that is very annoying for you to play against and you're not enjoying it, but they're having fun. And, as, and if they're having fun, I, 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 my mind personally, I can't get mad that they're having fun. You know, I, I I have before, but it starts to make it makes me feel like I don't necessarily need to get angry at them for having fun. You know what I mean? I almost feel like I'm trying to take away someone's fun, even though, again, like I said, the way that they play is absolutely annoying, and I I, I would want to, you know, do God knows what if I was in a really bad mood, right? <laughs> but essentially, you kind of have to work on your patience. Now, besides obviously empathizing and understanding you know to play in good spots you can also work on patience in your real life so can you it might be difficult but can you explain a situation at all recently where you're waiting for something and you felt very impatient uh i mean kind of yeah but like in in real life i am a very patient person but like waiting in line at the bmv like that obviously sucks, sucks i get impatient. Right? yeah 100 <laughs> percent. now like you just, you just want the situation to be over and resolved as fast as possible because you want to get on with whatever you actually want to do right but, right exactly 100 percent. now those specific instances now you said you're more patient in real life now why do you think you're more patient in real life than you are in melee if you had to say uh, for yourself because i just I, I just want to get into it. Like, it's how I've always been with games. Like, I'm just trying to actively go for shit, try to be slick with it. Like, I want to do cool stuff. And in my mind, the way I do cool stuff is by being hyper aggressive and just always holding forward. Okay, okay. Now, you can still be hyper aggressive, but you also have to recognize that you can't always be holding W against decent players like you can you, you can do it versus worse players you can, i i do it all the time i'm literally just narrowing in all the time when i'm playing unranked right but when you're playing versus half decent players they're just gonna wall you uh they're just gonna you know cc you or shield grab you or, or shield in general because your timings are predictable right so yeah that's, I, I, that's I, sorry that's one of the big things i get told a lot like that's one of the biggest differences i hear between my good nights of melee playing friendlies and my bad nights of melee playing friendlies like is, is your I, is your is your timing or your, your ability to change up your your approaches i guess right yeah it's like the different beats that i hit okay well here actually a better question is do you do you you yourself understand why you have those good nights versus those bad nights not at all not at all and and and, and you don't feel like there's any difference in enjoyment other than the fact that you're doing better or doing worse? Basically, yeah. Okay. Like, I, I, like, so I shared that clip in general yesterday or today, I don't remember, where, like, I just had the dash dance and it ended up being good, and then I punished with a knee. Like, when I get those type of moments where the patience of just not throwing out a hitbox gets me a reward, like, I recognize that as a situation and how it benefited me. Mm -hmm. But, but... It, uh, 
in my mind, it like it usually just comes down to oh, I'm on one tonight, or oh, I'm normal tonight. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, there's two things you can you can do. You can either reconcile with the fact that the game itself is is inherently defensive, and that being hyper aggressive is something if you want to improve the game, uh, extremely difficult, and you basically have to be like a drift master or a tech skill fiend or both basically if you really want to get good at the game or you can understand that there's more to the melee than just approaching and there's a lot more enjoyment you can get from the more mental aspect of outplaying your opponent because yeah there's a lot of fun in general with melee um with approaching and being aggressive and doing cool stuff but cool stuff doesn't only have to be with approaching or it doesn't have to only be with um like, like there's more to the game than just just than just doing you know cool stuff by approaching or, or punishes or whatnot there's also a lot of cool things you can do with just outplaying people right the thing the thing that makes none so interesting isn't that he's able to punish in cool ways or that he approaches a lot it's the ways he outplays his opponents right i think the most hype moments is like you know when he does something and you're like i've never seen somebody do that before like for instance when he was playing versus mute king at gommel on fd and he did that bear and then he did that f smash to punish that that dash attack right that was sick you know what i mean that, that wasn't necessarily him being aggressive either that was him punishing that was more so being defensive actually that was a counter act action right and mm -hmm. that in itself is really cool so i uh, uh, if it if I was you, I'd start to try to understand or try to enjoy the other aspects of melee, besides just the you know hyper aggression that you want to do. And if if you can't get past that, then all I have to say towards that is that you're gonna have to get really damn good at approaching then, <laughs> um, and at least try to wait a little bit. Because when I play, whenever I play versus people, um. Let's say Battlefield, because it's much easier to find an approach on Battlefield because platforms than there is, like, say, FD. Now, if I'm trying to approach somebody, I'll, I'll, I'll dash in for, like, a second or two, and then I'll go in, right? If if I'm really trying to go in, right? I'm, I'm really I'm really going to, you know, try and, like, I do a couple dash chances, and then I go in. If you look at someone like Mango's Falcon, actually, that's a good example. Let's look at Mango's Falcon real quick. Um, yeah, I'm going to change... Change the screens. One second, sorry about that. No worries. Yeah, I I was watching his uh, games versus uh, he's been playing like IPDW insane, like the secondaries, and he's been running Falcon. Falcon versus Moon. This is a good one. Change screens. All right, here you can you see my can you see my uh, screen still? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's watch this. It's so I now, asked. just obviously this this video is from seven years ago almost, but the majority of players you could still play the way that Mango's playing. Now. you'll notice that he doesn't really do much dash dancing. He kind of just goes at them. Uh, let's find where there's something different. But he's, he's always, he, like, he's trying to run away, trying to get a more specific situation. Uh, see, he dash dances, like, once or twice. You see how he just dash danced once or twice and went in? You can do that. And the thing is, you'll notice he approaches a lot with knee, right? So even if you go kind of one, two, and go in, most of the time it works out. He gets a punish here, knee. Let's just fast forward a little bit. Uh, try and get more neutral. I'm trying to get like more raw neutral, but right now they're playing very close. Like just more like true neutral, I guess you could say. He's pressuring, yeah. See how he does a little bit of dash dance and goes in, right? So he doesn't really dash dance much at all. He's always trying to kind of just pressure safely with aerials, right? He's getting close, He and he tries to get a nair, right? the fuck happened there <laughs> just knees him <laughs> true um that's why i like fighting marth is because the raw knees just hit more it just hit more right but here right here i mean he's he's with punishing here but you'll notice he just dashes dashes and it goes in again so you can definitely play like that again dashes in dashes out dashes in 
dashes that dashes out dashes in see that he, he doesn't even he's not even waiting he's literally just dashing out dashing in so you can do that but the issue is he the difference is rather is he's doing that only because the marth has thrown out a move so the best time to approach somebody is, ju- is just after they've thrown something out so if they're playing very grounded overshooting is a lot more difficult because they have way more options grounded right they they have they had technically have time to do an aerial if they do it soon enough they're grounded they have time to dash they have time to shield they have time to crouch cancel or asdi down correct mm-hmm. so the best time and you'll notice is to do it after they throw out a move now that's kind of harder with a character like sheik because she can like fair and then f tilt so you might have to just wait a second longer you have, or rather you have to kind of recognize whether or not that they like to throw out an aerial and then throw like an f tilt but most sheiks i find uh typically will throw out say uh a, a, like a fair or an air and then 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 they'll then they'll they, they won't necessarily throw an f tilt and if they do you can still just di that out right you can even if they f tilt you they can still di that out at low percent and you're safe right yeah but yeah again see dashes out dashes right in but only after marth threw out a move did you notice that he's waiting he is waiting but he's only waiting a second because the marth is immediately throwing something out but then that time he got caught for it, right? So I'm curious yeah. if he'll dash dance again. He might dash dance again, honestly. Like he might do an extra one after this one, because last time he got punished for it. Or he might not. He might he might just do a single dash out, dash in, and it might work for him. Yeah, we'll see. My my beat is usually like like you said the one two go. Yeah, like that's like that's my crutch beat is dash out, dash in. I think one more dash out, and then I'm going on. Yeah. And that's when I'm like super predictable. <laughs> Mango's ridiculous. But uh, I think the biggest advice a lot of like one thing that people say whenever they get advice from someone like SFAT is the uh, just wait a little bit longer. That's all you have to do. It doesn't even have to be that much longer, man. Like I'm not telling you to dash dance like 30 different times or dash dance at these specific beats. I'm more so just saying just wait like a literally like 20 frames longer. Could be. Could it be even like as long as like ten frames longer, in order before you go in? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's always just changing it up ever so slightly. Cause the 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 whole point of 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 approaching, you know, like how let's say Mango is doing right now, is that you want to change it up just enough that your timing is different, and then they can't just spam their walling moves at the same rate, right? Now, obviously. If they're playing grounded, like I said, and you're pl- and you're approaching from far enough away, they can just you know react to you jumping and do a, a certain option. But if they're throwing something out, um, you could easily approach, right? But again, it, the whole the whole point of what I'm trying to make is that if you change your timings, they'll throw out their moves potentially at a time when when it isn't good for them, and then your approach will hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what else? Jesus, I have a much easier time with punishing Marths rather than Spacey's because up tilt is such a bitch. <laughs> yeah, honestly, up tilt. Um, Spacey's are just faster characters in general, right? A lot of their moves come out quicker. Um, most of Marth's moves aren't actually extremely fast, other than like down tilt, right? Down tilt and grab. Um, yeah. up tilt is pretty slow as pretty you know it's pretty punishable uh nair's pretty safe but it's not like it's super fast uh um i can comparison to like spacey's like spacey's nair come out like god knows what frame the rub tilts pretty quickly fox's up smash is frame seven you know what i mean like the list goes on drills pretty fast up air is decently fast back air is extremely fast like they're all fast moves but they're they don't have much range right yeah, back air and up tilt are big things for me. That's like why when I was trying to knee you or uh, against like when you were on the Sheik earlier uh, and you mentioned the don't stop and go, I was trying to like halfway practice the ratch jump because I need to use that more versus spacies for that exact situation. That's really good. And honestly, what I recommend doing is um, if you can set up like a save state on uh, Uncle Punch or 20XX or whatever and... Uh, just practice like down throw and then they wake up and then they do an up tilt and then just practice that spacing and have a bunch of different ones where they, 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 you know, 
DI a certain amount off of like a down throw. So you're not like always doing it off the same spacing. You know what I mean? And even that yeah. will kind of get you more, you know, more understanding of kind of what the timing is behind um, hitting the knee on an up tilt, right? Because that in itself, in my mind, is the hardest part. Is like, when do I start kneeing at that point? You know what I mean? When do I, when, like, I know they're going to do it up tilt, but then I feel like sometimes I do the up, the knee too early or I do too late, and then by then they can shield, or if I do too um, early, then I, I, I feel like um, I'm drifting in too far, and then they can actually catch an up tilt because they're still, um, they're still like getting up, and then they're still invincible or whatever. So what I I find is like if you can just kind of set up that situation and then work work it through, you'll find that um, it's a lot easier uh, once you actually start doing it to people in a real match because you'll be like okay I I got the muscle memory down for this right I know this is gonna happen I'm set up in this situation all I have to do is execute right. Yeah. Um, what else is there? But yeah, essentially, yeah, just wait a little bit longer. If you're going to approach, um, understand that Falcon has a bunch of different drifts, right? You can fast fall. You can drift super far. You can undershoot, right? Like, you have you have a lot of uh, a lot of utility in your drift and in, in your movement, right? And I think that's the one thing people forget is, like, yeah, a fully approaching with, with knee is really good. But it's also good to kind of, like, pull back a little bit sometimes. You know what I mean? and sometimes you know it's better to just run up and crouch right like you have to if you're gonna play aggressive you have to mix up your your approaches either mix up your timings mix up your 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 drift mix up your timing and your drift mix up all th uh, uh timing drift and you know what move or mix up all three uh or just completely do a completely different option like i said with run up cc right yeah um besides that we can I run definitely some... need to use the run up CC more because like, um, Ratch did like the Ratch talk session in Discord a while ago, and that made me start using run up shield more. Run up shield's really good too. Yeah, I, I've stopped using that recently for no real reason. I've tried. I've been aware of it. I'm trying to work it back in. Um, the thing about run up shield that's really good is that it's more instant. Sometimes you don't have time to to set up run up CC because CC takes a little bit longer because you have to be in run and then run and then crouch takes two frames, um, so it's a little bit slower than and and less uh, usable as Falcon especially because he's such a long dash. Then say run run up shield, run up shield you can pull up shield immediate almost immediately right and in dash right. So you have to understand it's like. In my position where I don't have much room between myself and the other opponent, then run up shield is probably a better option. Am I more spread out and I can run up more forward? Then CC is more the option. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's the only thing you have to be, you know, cognizant of with, with in, in terms of uh, run up CC. Um, besides that, we can we can run some games if you want, um, however many games you want. Uh, and we, you know, don't worry about the time. Uh, I don't mind running games for however long you want. And if there's any other things you want to work on, we, we definitely can. But I think us going through, like, just playing a little bit, I can point out more specifically uh, certain things, right? And then that yeah. way you can kind of get a better feel for kind of my thought process and what, you know, what you should be doing, right? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And then, honestly, I'll probably, like, get some VODs here soon. And if you're still doing these, I'll hit you up, like, for another one. When for I have some actual replays to go over after I work in some more stuff. For sure. And and honestly, I, like I said, I, th I find the best way to improve, besides obviously playing, is doing VOD analysis. Because then you really kind of, like, analyze, why the hell am I doing this, right? It's not even, like you know, understanding what's a better option or whatever. It's really just understanding why I'm doing this. Because if you can understand the feeling and the thought behind your actions, that's how you can really improve on them and, and choose better options at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, do you want me, who do you want me to play? Um, anyone is fine, honestly. Uh, just reps in general feel good. Obviously you're a Falcon maiden. I, I'm uh, telling you, I can play literally any character at a, a decent level. So just let me... Like, I can play Sheik, play Fox, Falco. But I can play, even play Pikachu, Samus, Ganondorf, Marth. I can, I can even play Game & Watch or Puff. Like, any character you want. 
Uh, Cheek is the one I'm most worried about running into at bracket this weekend, so I guess that. All right. <laughs> Like I said, I feel scrappy enough with a. Uh, I've just missed two L cancels right off rip. Um, I feel most like scrappy and like I can do something with a uh, species. Mm. So I wanted to point out there, you did a knee right here, and it was good space, but you didn't fast fall it. If if you're gonna throw out something, really try to fast fall it. Tech flubs. See right there, you're trying to attack when you shouldn't. Nice knee. That, I just want to point out, that was a good knee. But the jab after was not good. Because I so, so why isn't jab good there? Because that is an option I do a lot. So is I I knee right into gentlemen's. Uh so knee into gentlemen can be fine, depending on how most how the like the person like the opponent likes to react to it, right? A lot of people they like to immediately act at a thing, so catching them with jabs is good. If they have half a brain, they'll know to just hold down after and spam grab if you're doing gentleman right um in your case you spaced it and i power shielded it meaning i have more hits or more sh uh, shield stun meaning that you definitely could have dashed away and you spaced it well enough that i you could have dashed away meaning that if i'm looking for you to gentleman i might accidentally more likely not shield grab and then you can dash in again and get that grab or get a knee or whatever right okay but that was so. without that but that was that was a good knee like that even though i was ready for it because you know I, like I, I just was it was a good knee oh nice try at the cc i don't know why you turned around Ooh, i missed the up again yeah i'm very not good right now it's all good just literally just get warm and and don't worry about talking i'll do all the talking and if you want you can just say like yes no or nothing just try and focus on your own gameplay Up throw there instead of down throw. Above, above like 35, do up throw. Okay. Again, up throw. Careful there. Um, that right there, um, it's better to be on the side platform and then drop instead of doing a full hop to jump onto the side platform and do like a stomp or a bear. You know what I mean? Because it's much easier to um, punish them coming on to stage by uh, being on a platform and dropping down. Now, you still have to understand that if I'm, you know, perfect, like if I do a good enough ledge dash, I can up tilt and probably catch you still. But if, you're, if your goal is to aggress or to punt or to pressure me like that, it's better to be on a platform and drop through than it is to be already in the air. Cause you have the chance of catching you without your jump, right? Okay. Versus, See what I mean? Grab, remember, I, I want grab, I want I literally grab at low percent. Bad knee. See, so you didn't fast fall, right? Even then, it was poorly spaced. Okay, what I what I want to say right there. Here, come back here. Come back here. If I throw you off the stage, you know, come back on stage. If I throw you off of stage, don't try to immediately jump forward like this. Instead, once you're able to jump and then drift forward. So, okay. and so what you did before is you jumped and you immediately went like this. And I could easily forward tilt you. I could down tilt you. Hell, I could even fucking F smash you and I'd probably hit you. Whereas the, what you should do, and, you'll, and if you notice, if you ever watch Johnny or S2J VODs and, and mostly other any Falcons, but this is really where I, I got it from. What he'll do is he'll, after the down throw, he'll do a neutral jump and then he'll drift in. 
which is which is kind of hard for me to do right now because I'm chic and I don't have much aerial drift. But it'll be a neutral jump and then he drifts in, and what and why he does that is because it avoids stuff like F tilt, it, it, or or something like a fair or like a down tilt. And it's much easier to go grab ledge. Now they can obviously call that out, but it's 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 you're much less likely to get gimped than if you were to do what you did right there where you just immediately jumped and drifted full forward because I could easily have down smashed that and you, now you have no jump and you're dead, right? Yeah. So it's it's kind of hard to start doing that because, again, your instinct is I'm off stage, I want to get onto stage or I want to get onto ledge. But you, if you really, if you watch some Johnny VODs or we can practice it right now if you want where I down throw you if you come over, over to the ledge, I down throw you and then you jump and then you drift forward. Yeah, like that kind of, right? That's a lot better. Like DI, the DI fully out. Like that, essentially like that. That's a lot better. Now, um, sometimes it's better to go lower. Sometimes, it, you know, you want to mix it up. Um, but essentially it's much better to do that in that situation than it is to fully drift forward. Cause you're just giving, you're just asking to get hit essentially. Yeah, Coderin ate me up for that and pointed that out to me. Yeah. Not he didn't know that I should do the uh neutral jump or whatever. Yeah, it neutral jump and then drift then drift forward. Yeah, I word. Did you uh did you just play him in like viewer battle viewer battles like he has on a stream or Yeah. Uh I have like a very like Weak history with Coderin because I started off as a Marth main and like in my first week, I, first week I was getting coaching from him. Word. So he knows me. Like, uh, yeah. So when I popped into his chat, he was down for some games. Good bear. Definitely could have Tomahawk grabbed me there. Bad bear. See that that bear right there? You you. You basically drifted it such that you drifted it didn't even fast fall, but even the fast fall wouldn't have helped you. But you drifted it such that um, you you just didn't space it at all. Like I could easily get a shield grab. Like I could have waited another half a frame or half a second, thirty frames at least, and I would have still been able to get that shield grab. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I remember you want to really space your moves. You want to you want to play. You want to make it so that she can't get a grab. That's your that's your ultimate goal. Play around the fact that I can grab you at any point. Nice back air. Even though I didn't up throw when you told me to do it above 35. It's all good, man. Again, that's one of those things you just have to just spam it unranked and eventually you'll get it. What's up there? Shielding, you're shielding too preemptively again. Okay, um, what else was there? So besides that up throw, uh, 35%, um, you also, when I had invincibility, let's say you just killed me and I came back, you were just kind of in center stage, just doing any, you were just doing nothing. And I could easily just drop down bear and then get like a soft bear and grab you. So you kind of have to think, okay, they're in an invincibility. I got to either run around and, and make myself really hard to hit or I go to ledge. You know what I mean? I, or I go on the side platform and I light shield. But the issue with that is that you can get shield grab for that or whatever, right? So what I like to do is I like to, if I'm really like, man, I don't want to get hit, I go to ledge, right? Or if I'm confident in my my you know my movement and my ability to you know fake them out, I'll I'll just stay on stage and I'll kind of move around and I'll try and evade you know their invincibility, right? Yeah, I usually do the just like tweaking, running around shit because I'm not confident off the ledge. I feel like I'm always just setting myself up to get gimped. Okay, that's definitely something you need you need to work on just comfortability on the ledge, because the ledge is a spot where you basically in my mind. The more comfortable you are, are on the ledge, that can make or break um, you winning games a lot of times. Because the ledge is where a lot happens. A lot of all every edge guard happens at the ledge. Every stock, you know, uh, can can easily be ended at the ledge. So if you're not comfortable at the ledge, you pretty much just doom yourself eventually. Yeah, that right there. Sometimes I di in, but honestly, it 
you almost have to S SDI the, the dash tags because you're just going to get... It's just going to lead into one into the other. See, like there, I, I acted immediately out of it and it, it, it worked, right? Good gentlemen, right there, you're too close to ledge. Remember, be, be further away. Think of threat ranges. I, if I'm on ledge, I can only hit so far, right? Or if I if I get off stage, I, I have to ledge dash into a move, which is a committal, right? And most of the time, most sheiks don't ledge dash good enough or well enough, rather, uh, to be able to do a move that's even close to, you know, invin even partially invincible, right? Bad knee. And now you're dead because of it. If I was good, you'd be dead. And then bad ledge play, and now you're probably dead for it. All right? Comfort, comfort. Like, that was kind of shitty because you kind of accidentally got on ledge, but still, ledge ability means a lot. Good overshoot, good turn on gentlemen, but, or turn on jabs, but you messed up. You tried, I liked that. Hmm. Hmm. I don't recommend, unless you're comfortable on the ledge, I don't recommend teching towards the ledge. Especially because I can down throw you here and I can F tilt. Here, DI, DI fully out right now. Okay. See that? So, I, 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 and now if you don't DI properly, I can even get a fair. Or you, you, you DI'd out, now I have free edge guard. So you have to understand that going towards ledge, when you're teching towards ledge, you're giving yourself a lot less options. You're, you might potentially be making it harder for them because they have to, you know, dash forward or whatever. But in my mind, it's better to go for missed techs so you can SDI up at like low percent or just try and stay not near ledge against Sheiks, right? Okay. I'm going to press start now. Bad Nair. But you see that, that Nair in place? I, I'm sorry I keep pausing, but I just want to make it clear that nair right there you didn't even have all both hits out there was no drift with it so you were kind of stuck the best part about drifting a lot is that it makes it ambiguous on where you're gonna end up right whereas if you do an aerial in place i know you're gonna land there that's where you're landing and like i know exactly where that is it's much easier for me to visualize you know where how to space against that than it is when you're drifting and you kind of like land and then immediately move right you kind of mm -hmm. understand that yeah right so doing like aerials in place are great if you're trying to cut someone off but if i'm not in a position where you should be doing that it's extremely predictable and i can definitely space around it a lot easier and punish you way more easily and that right there so right that right there was you did you did your knee to undershot remember overshooting is better than than undershooting see well, I just didn't get lunch. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I. This is the worst nerves I've had playing in a while. I don't know why. Eh, who knows? It just happens sometimes, man. I've also just like been telling you a lot of information, so you're you're kind of like self-conscious about what to do, what not to do. Plus, also, I'm saying shit that you probably are trying to think about while you're also playing right so if you want I, I can be quiet for a little bit we can play and then i can say some more things afterwards we can just keep on rocking it mm, that was a really good dash chance you could have you definitely could have shield grabbed me there that knee was good too though Down throw at low percent. Ooh, that was good nair. Good knee. Ooh, that smash was good. Good 
See that Nair is bad. Again, Nair in place where you didn't even get both hits out. Bad. But you see right there, you immediately went in after. Do do what Mango does. He dashes out and then in again. Like it's like it's it's literally the the most slight like this. You literally go back for a second and then you go in. That right there, that. Bad nair. Diing in. Please di out. Yeah, I don't think about di enough. That's fine, dude. Uh, trust me. I've, I've is it just di out in general? <laughs> it, honestly, uh, diing out is really good versus Sheik. Um, obviously, can screw you over if you're like near ledge and you or and you, you know dash attack you and then you're diing out and then you get fair and you're basically dead at like seventy. But it, it, on the throws, always di out. Unless okay. you have, unless you're in certain situations where diing in might save you from getting, you know, drop zone fared for some reason. Like if you're on a platform, even then, they, I feel like most of the times they could just shield drop fair anyways. But almost always, you're pretty much going to want to di down in a way just so you can get as far away as possible, right? Make it harder for them. Your whole goal, like I, like I was saying before, your whole goal besides, uh, like for game plan, besides, um, you know, getting what you want and then avoiding what you don't want and vice versa for them is to make it as hard as possible on them right and di is the best way to do that like the the game is so sandboxy that you can ask like you've seen those task videos where they have the guys like they have you know sdi like crazy and you have ganon versus ganon they're just stomping each other and they're living to like 900 percent somehow just because their sdi is so crazy and they can tech you know what i mean you've seen those videos before right yeah. I'm not saying that you can do that, but the thing is that there's capabilities in the game to, to avoid a lot of things more than people realize. And DI, especially at lower levels, is something that um, is heavily underutilized. You being able to get out of certain things, like if you watch any good players, you'll notice you're like, damn, how do you get out of that you know, combo? I thought that you know, like I always get hit by that and I, I, can't, you know, I can't get out of it. And you look at it, if you really analyze it, it's like they SDI'd the jab or they, you know, SDI the shine, so then the Falco can't get a pillar, right? You've you've seen yeah. the fix before, right? Yeah. So you definitely have seen, you know, Rockman and his and and, and him showing Falco, uh, you know, Falco versus Falcon, and then you know on FD pillar combos where he DIs up on on like a dare, or he DIs up on a shine, or he DIs down and away on a dare, and he can get a grab, stuff like that, right? That's the kind of stuff that allows you to go for more risky situations because. If in the event that you approach and it doesn't go planned, you have a backup measure in order for it to make it at least more difficult for them to get a punish. But when you're just, you know, haphazardly approaching and you don't really have an idea of, you know, kind of uh, something in the back of your mind, you're not really thinking about it, but, you know, you don't have that situation ingrained in your mind uh, that allows you to kind of, you know, avoid something or make it harder for the other player. You're just giving them free punishes at that point, Right. Mm -hmm. so it, it's again and you yourself said that you want to be hyper aggressive well to be hyper aggressive you also have to have amazing defense someone like rockman the reason he's able to play so offensive is because his defense is ca his counter you know uh uh or counter offense but mostly just defense his defense is is insane his sdi is insane his awareness is insane right if he didn't yeah. have that he wouldn't be half the player he is like it's it's everything because spacing moves and doing all that other stuff is easy, but the the defense is much harder because that's the stuff that you have to preemptively do. You overshooting knee is just you holding forward and then pressing right on the C stick, right? Like or whatever, left on the C stick, depending on which way you're facing, right? Yeah. But getting F tilted by a Sheik while you're doing that that takes you SDIing out like away down and away such that you don't get they don't get a grab. You know what I mean? Or them then shield grabbing you potentially if you do a bad aerial and then you getting down thrown and then you missing attack, you now have to SDI a jab stuff like that makes it so that that's also what wins you tournaments. 
that kind of defense, right? Because if people can't people can't combo you and you out combo them, you just win. That's as simple as that. The game's that simple. You out punish the other person, you win. So if you make it hard for them to punish you, you not only can you play aggressively, but you also make it for a lot easier on yourself to out punish them. Versus Captain Ooh, I can't quit fucking yawning, but yeah, I got you. <laughs> you probably need some water, man. I find whenever I'm tired, I, I need some water. Really? Yeah, dehydration can definitely make you tired. I am definitely dehydrated today. I did not drink my usual, like, three liters. Messed up. Up air. Full hop, up air, or knee. I usually do up air because it's easier. Just especially because you're on, uh, you're closer to port one, which means you don't have that extra frame of uh, grab, like that one less frame. You know about that, right? No. Okay, so when you're closer to port four, or rather you are, you know, a higher number than the person you're playing, you have one less frame of throw, meaning that you can act out one frame sooner. Like getting thrown, or uh, so let's say you 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 up throw with Falcon, you can act out one frame sooner. Gotcha. So so, so to if, follow up, not to get out. Yes, but. to follow up. Meaning that, for instance, um, so that's why I always like whenever I'm uh closer to port one, or they're closer, you know, um, I, I hate saying this because it's hard to say which, but when you're closer to port one, uh, and they're closer to port four, I err I err err on the side of doing up airs more so out of throws. Just because it's easier to hit, whereas when I'm you know closer to port four, it's much much easier to hit a knee. Now that being said, you can you can still force them to air dodge uh, at certain percents off up throw, like a decent range, and then you can punish that air dodge with an up air. But I find it's almost always I'm like able to get an up throw knee on Sheiks if I'm closer to port four. So. Okay. Just keep that in mind, because that definitely makes a difference. In my mind, that makes a lot of difference. A whole frame is, is much more than people realize. Nice DI out. Mm, too late there. Nice immediate act out. Nice CC. Bad knee, bad knee, bad knee. Another, another not great knee, but it worked out. Nice. Mm, careful with that double jump there. See, bears like that. See, you got punished for that, right? Up throw, up throw, up throw. Mm. Um, I flubbed it and then just thought I was going to beat you to ledge. <laughs> Where I've been there. <laughs> Careful, I keep getting behind you and you keep trying to act out a shield. So if I'm if I'm behind you and you're shielding, try to roll. 
or or try to make it or try to wave dash your shield but really at that point you kind of have to roll because if you try okay. to act as a shield i'm just gonna i'm gonna hit you right and not every time that's happened i've hit you with an up tilt or i've hit you with a uh, forward tilt or whatever right so all you can really do is roll even though at that point they can still wait and dash stack you or grab you you really don't have an alternative and hopefully they go for a grab and you kind of have some counterplay but honestly at that point you're kind of screwed so understand that Sheik's behind me. I can't act. I can't jump at a shield. I just can't jump at a shield. Okay. Try to avoid those situations, but you know, if, if it ever happens. Nice. Sloppy movement near ledge again, like we were saying before. Nice up throw knee. Act it immediately. Shouldn't do that. That was supposed to be an up B, but I was eating that back here either way. <laughs> Just roll instead. Roll instead of spot dodge? Yeah, spot dodge is too leg. Yeah, I can grab again. Fuck. I just shield tilted there. Mm, yeah, you missed the tech there. I can easily just react with literally fair or bear because it hits both. It hits either side rather. Mm, you could have grabbed me. Remember, p people love the shield drops. So if you, you do an up air right here, and I do it, you can... There you go. See that? You spaced it enough that I throw it a move, and then you can immediately grab after it, right? Or you can, you can even just up air late. Do like a late up air, if you can. Uh, and, and then immediately hold down. And then that way you can get a CC grab. I think Rock talked about that, too. That feels weird with the L cancel for some reason because I'm on the box it's just it's not a movement I've tried before oh uh, you're on the box true that makes that makes sense and besides that your other obviously game plan with Sheik is obviously like avoid grab uh, and, and, and whatnot, but also avoid getting off stage, right? Because if you're off stage against Sheik, you're pretty much dead. She can rinse yeah. and repeat soft bears until she gets a strong hit or until she can just roll up, right? So it's like, and avoiding getting off stage, it's like, well, don't tech towards stage. Try to, you know, do no miss tech into I jab reset into you SDI. You know, you know you're familiar with that, right? Yeah, you haven't been jab resetting me though. Because so. you haven't missed tech once. Thought I had no. Yeah, as far as I know, <laughs> off of down throw, you've maybe done it once. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Do it more then. Yeah. Mix it in more, and then try and STI the jab. Right. Now understand that some sheiks will not as will not jab you, right? And they'll just go for straight up, you know, crouch tech chase like we do as Falcon, right? You have, I think, no jump? No, you do. That's another thing. You gotta get comfortable with getting hit, too. Because you... Like, I noticed you kept trying to act out, and you kept getting, like, dare by accident, right? Yeah. Bad nair. Again, you're fast falling too soon. Be more comfortable with doing no fast fall nairs, but like just drifting more. Focus more on drift and less on fast falls, right? Drift, especially because you're on the box, it's much easier to get like full drifts and whatnot. Good DI. But you're pretty much dead here. 
And there, you, you really have to, like, DI away or just hope I fuck up. Again, slow to ledge. Up throw, up throw, up throw. Not a bad knee, but didn't lead anything. Good space nair. That was a good space nair. Didn't lead anything, but it's still good. And there, yeah. You have to DI that out. Again, why you're you're trying to attack me when I'm still invincible? You gotta you gotta wait just a second. Just trying to channel some squid there. True. Honestly, at the, end of, at the end of the day, the only way, and again, I, 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 I recognize your frustration with it, but the only way to improve in this matchup is to play it more, right? Um, yeah. And get more, get, you know, get better with your, your fundamentals, right? Because uh, especially in this matchup, I find that um, I need to be clean on my drift and on my spacing. Otherwise, I just get punished, right? Yeah, and 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 you're only now. This is like your first day where you're really trying to overshoot, anyways, with like knee and whatnot, right? So it's going to be awkward, especially in the box, to kind of get used to doing that more often and doing that effectively, right? But eventually, it'll start to click, and you'll start to see kind of, oh, this works, this doesn't work. And again, it takes it'll take longer if you don't do analysis, right? Um, but even then, just doing it more often, you'll start to, you know. You'll start to get, uh, you'll start to think about it and be like, oh, okay, this knee didn't work here, and then you kind of think, why does, why didn't this knee work here? Oh, they threw out a move to cut me off. Oh, okay, well, why didn't this knee work here? Okay, I misspaced it. Why didn't this knee did not work here? Oh, it's because I didn't fast fall it. Oh, or it's because I did fast fall it. You know what I mean? And eventually, you start to understand more and more. This works here. This doesn't work here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's really hard for me to say, like a clear defined you know, set flow chart, you know what I mean? Because the game is too, it's too dynamic for that, right? Even changing off by like uh, a pixel or two can change certain things, you know, in certain cases. Not that extreme, but that just tells you how much variance there are in situations in this game, right? So a lot of it's kind of like seeing a situation that's similar to another one and then knowing that you can act upon it in a similar way. It's kind of like playing, um, it's kind of like playing a sport, you know what I mean? There's no there's no direct way in order for you to, you know, do certain situations, right? Like there's similar situations or, you know, you kind of get a feel for it, and that's kind of how melee works, right? Like what's you you've played sports before, correct? Yeah. What sports like, have you played? Uh basically all of them, but I think if you have any experience with it, the easiest thing to connect would be wrestling. Wrestling. Okay. Uh more or, try or, more so or, more so less one to one than more so like uh team sports uh football was the main one i did then okay so let's say for instance with um with tackling right actually i could have probably could have done that with wrestling but tackling is just do it for rest or do it for football um mm -hmm. tackling specifically sometimes you you'll you know you'll be able to grab let's say you won't, won't be able to get a good tackle but you might be able to grab their foot and might be able to still kind of take them down but in this case, instead of grabbing the ankle, you grab the calf, right? It's stuff like that where it's similar enough, but it's different enough that 
you you need to recognize that situation and it might also be different because of the fact that he has more weight on that calf than he does the other calf you get my point so the stuff starts to add up on what you need to do in order to make the right play right the same thing works with melee right instead of it being you know you spaced here you you in time this it's it's off by a little bit so now you have to change it right now that's kind of a bad example for you know tackling because most time when you try to tackle you try to you know take their take their legs completely and not just a certain part but you kind of understand where i'm trying to get across the point that you change one small thing and the situation changes it can change drastically or it can only change a little bit so and that same applies to melee you change one thing and everything changes so uh, my whole point is to try to help you understand what to look for after this session so that you can apply it yourself instead of me having to go through every single situation where this is this and this is that Unless we do VOD analysis, which in that case, it's a little bit different. Yeah, I get what you mean as far as, like, being able to apply one thing to many situations. I think one of the things I struggle with is knowing the tool in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. I, I mean, there's. I've already taught, I've, from what I can tell, I've already taught you about um, the neutral jump, drift in off of, like, you know, being off ledge, like off of a throw or something like that. Uh, what was mm. another one? The frame, the extra frame of, of, of you know, th like one less frame of throw uh, when you're closer to port four. Um, yeah. And there's a bunch of other things too. So you definitely have a lot to learn about the game, which is great because that's exciting, right? Um, but it's definitely certain things where, um, like how long have you been playing for? Uh, I'm a slippy kid. Oh, okay. Now that makes a lot more sense. So you, you got a lot of time. I remember around this time it was been a year now i was about the same skill level as you about year in maybe a bit better just because i had a brother who played the game at the time right um yeah. he taught me some things but um hmm, i'm trying to think now i'm not trying to john super hard but i promise i'm not usually this bad don't worry but, man i I've, I've, yeah. i know the days where it's like you're just not melee mind and again like i said i've been throwing a lot at you so that's definitely even if it's not consciously on your mind it's subconsciously on your mind right yeah and plus like, also I'm, I'm like analyzing i'm you know critiquing your play which is you know i'd, I'd be self-conscious about it right like someone's you know pulling you know saying this and that about my gameplay so i'm you know i'm trying to do this and that i'm trying to change you're trying to do a lot right now right which is like yeah. it's difficult right and that's why I record these because then you can kind of go back and see what works, what doesn't work and kind of what I was getting at. Right. Because a lot of this, a lot of what I said real time right there, you probably don't remember, but you can go through the VOD again and be like, okay, this works like this. This works like that. Right. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we can play like a few more and then I think uh, I'll call it there. And yeah, then, it's totally fine. I was going to say the same thing. And then, yeah, here, we'll just play just like two more, just no talking. How about that? That works. Cool. Versus Captain Falcon. Ready? Go! Oh, my two, controller's not working. Two, there we go. Two, two. 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 Mm. Damn it. <laughs> I'm not getting these uh shield pivot wave dash packs. Hmm. I feel that. 
too low percentage to have throw, but that's not bad because platform is there. Let's do let's do three, so two more after this. Roll. I tried. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to buffer the roll, and it's not mm. what I gotta do. Fucking hate this stage. <laughs> They're not playing it. Not play it. <laughs> Fuck FD, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> forget you can still do run up grab and whatnot i just wanted to make the emphasis on you know approaching without just doing run up grab right yeah like i said that's only it's something i think i should do but don't do enough mm -hmm. oh word okay yeah remember if you don't think you're gonna get the knee go for the up air which again that just takes with kind of understanding yeah. Okay, what do you. Well, I don't know what you're doing in when I have invincibility. You're going to the top platform where I am? When you have so much more stage? It's a very bad habit of mine. Uh, mm, slow it dash. Slow, slow, slow it down and just wait a second more. And then, and then dash. Again, that's something you gotta practice. Nice. I thought that I grabbed the ledge. <laughs> and I did it again. Like, that's... I don't know why that's my between stock ritual, but it is. You notice how I'm just I'm just walking forward and I'm just being able to F tilt too. You gotta understand threat ranges a little bit better. Okay. Which is I, I just it's hard to quantify that, but basically I trying to understand like what is the max minimum distance I can be before someone can hit me with something, right? 
Like right there, that was you. You were outspaced my my forward tilt with your bear, right? I was trying to be slick with it, even though you fucking chained. Chained. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll call it at that then. Um, but essentially, yeah, the, yeah. the main points, other than obvious, just, you know, cleaning up certain tech skills, you're definitely going to have to practice. Um, either, in, in I find it's easier to practice in like 20XX or rather Uncle Punch than just practice like throw combos and stuff like that and acting out of stuff. Um, I, Solo practice is definitely something I need to start doing. Definitely. If I was you, I would. I don't know if you have it enabled, but enable the uh, flash red on missed L cancel. I do. Okay. Also have the um, uh, green on green on right. wait. Do you have that as well? Yep. Okay. Well, at least you have those. Um, so keep having those on. <laughs> <laughs> at least you have them on. Um, You're shit at using them. Yeah. <laughs> you have them I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Uh, I get the implication. I get context <laughs> clues. I'm not one of these socially inept melee players, dude. <laughs> well, at least you got that going for you. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Um, um, but besides that, yeah, definitely Uncle Punch and you and set up. And if you want, I can send you the latest Uncle Punch. Um, I've got it. I, I've got everything. I just I I don't use my resources enough. Part of the reason I'm a Falcon player is one because the falcon court is just full of a bunch of cool people but also just because there's the most resources at least that are easily accessible and because of the cookbook i just don't utilize it enough <laughs> fair enough i'm an i'm a i'm a unranked warrior i'm the, I, I'm I, the same i'm exactly the same um if i was you though i would if it's really hard for you um find a time uh every day for just 30 minutes, nothing, no more, just literally 30 minutes, don't, or even less than maybe 20 minutes, where you set up a specific instance in Uncle Punch or whatever, and you just practice that. Um, yeah. Whether it be you practicing your shield drops on hit, like someone hits your shield and you shield drop, uh, yeah. practicing your throw combos, you know, you can change the DIs and, and, and what percents. And then look at the flow chart too. There's a flow chart we have in the versus Sheik, like with the bot. Um, and you can uh, look at specifically what the, f the throw combo is for Sheik, right? And other characters too, but sp specifically Sheik because that's your trouble trouble matchup, right? Yeah. And, and practice, you know, specific things like that uh, in Uncle Punch, and just pick some something for that for that day, right? Thirty minutes. That's it. Don't have to do anything more than that. And just keep trying to get improve on it, right? It's like it's like lifting weights. You know what I mean? It's better to do you know a little bit every day, even if it's a little bit, than to do nothing at all. Yeah. Right. So, um, that's try doing that. Um, I outlined, a, I outlined a lot during this session. Um, again, uh, the one key takeaways I want you to have is, is work on one thing at a time. If you're playing on ranked, like if you're trying to play to improve at that, at that, you know, during that session, choose one thing to work on and then apply that. If you're just playing for fun, just play for fun. Don't like, don't you, you can enjoy the game still. Don't get me wrong. Like, but if you're trying, you know, if you're saying, Oh, I'm going to take this session on the rank to, you know, practice this, do that, you know, practice CC. Okay. If you're gonna do that, just spam it. Practice overshooting. Okay. Just spam it. Um, uh, if you're trying to, you know, practice, you know, shield dropping, spam it, whatever you're trying to practice, uh, you know, shield pivot wave dashes, pra spam it. You know what I mean? Just keep spamming that specific option and you eventually get more comfortable with it and see where it works and when it doesn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. um besides that uh take take note that like you're also whenever you were doing the you know the dash dance knees you're doing them at the same timing you might not have felt like it but you're pretty much doing it at almost the exact same timing every time you did those yeah it's kind of the uh 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 uh, 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 uh <laughs> right if which you got a break if if you really need to um just practice going like uh uh you know what i mean like in your mind when you're doing it like and practicing it and uncle puncher just on a cpu you know regularly just practice doing uh uh in your mind right just like break that habit and once you break it then you can start you know doing different timings and whatnot but it's really just got to get over that hump of 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 you know that bad habit right mm -hmm. Wh which again uh, the best way 
I haven't said this yet, actually, so I can't say again, but the best way I've found to get over bad habits, if I'm really, really stuck, is just to take a break. Take, like, a two-week break from the game and then come back and then, you know, start practicing certain things and, and applying certain things, right? Yeah, I, I touched on that in the general chat the other days because I did take, like, a... I took, like, a week break from the game mm-hmm. and then just, like, when you first come back, like, all the autopilot is gone. Gone. The schmixes just feel nasty. Mm-hmm. Which, which actually feels great, right? You're like, oh my god! You're like the... I'm, I'm just doing shit that I don't normally do. It's awesome. It's crazy that I can always play like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, oh my god, I can do this. This is a thing. What the heck? You know what I mean? Um, so definitely, um, quality practice is important. So just remember. And again, if you're not having fun, don't play. I have yeah. I, I I have the guide to improvement I think in mentality chat so I'll link that to you after but like those things are very important if you can follow that list you'll you'll improve um, but yeah essentially apply one thing at the same time quality practice um, uh, have fun with the game and then everything else I outlined previously with you know the game plan uh, stuff like understanding what I want what they want what they don't want what I don't want. And then, you know, bad situations that you want to avoid. Like for Sheik and Falcon, you don't want to be off stage as Falcon. And basically try to think yourself and or watch other videos uh, or like VODs of other Falcons and see, you know, what led to them getting off stage, right? Was it because they tech towards Sledge after a down throw and then they get down throw again? Is it because they DI'd a, 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 a fair too hard off stage? Like what was it? You know what I mean? And and then what, what led to that fair connecting to them you know what i mean like do a, do a lot more kind of thinking into the game right try it just try to think like why did this happen that, always ask yourself when you're watching melee or playing melee after like if you're on the angel platform or after your games or after whatever why did this happen like really try to think if you don't know then watch the game over again and, and look at oh this happened because of this and as time goes on you start to you know solidify you know uh specific things and then you start to understand, you know, how to avoid them or how to cause them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, besides that, um, there's a lot of other things we talked about. And, and you can watch the VOD again if you want. Um, but, yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know. You can message me anytime or you can ask me right now. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. And if you ever want to just play games normally, we just play games. You don't have to pay for, you know, the $20 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. I'll definitely hit you up in the future with like some vods and some clearer questions because i did come into this kind of just thinking game plans like what do i want to do versus everybody but you touched on a lot and i got a lot to think about Uh, yeah my my whole goal was to make it so not like cookie cutter but generalized ideas on how to build your own game plans right yeah um and and that's like one thing I've been struggling with because like what I've what I have done with the notes that I have from like the session with Rock is he gave me a bunch of level one options mm-hmm. and then kind of what you were talking about where I've just been trying to use them and then figure out how else I can use them. Mm-hmm. And eventually, once you the reason he gives you those level one options is because he can't give you level two or three or whatever bullshit other levels there are to it because you're not even comfortable applying those level one. You can't even control your character effectively yet. So why am I going to have you go towards, you know, a higher level, right? There's no point. If you can't do the, you know, the, the, the level one mix mix ups, you know, level one fundies or whatever, like there's no reason for me to delve deeper. Right. Which is why I tried to make it very generic for yourself to question things on your own, because there's only so much I can show you. My whole point at this point in your career is to show you how to think better and think more efficiently and play more efficiently and and improve faster, right? I, I, I can't necessarily cause you to sit down and practice these things. I can't cause you or I can't force you to sit down and think about things. That's all up to you and yourself, right? Yeah. But besides that, I mean, you definitely have the, um, for the most part, the drive. You're definitely similar to what I was where I, like, I definitely don't want to like grind so hard on certain things but you're definitely gonna have to try to at least like 30 minutes a day just practice one thing in uncle punch because it's crucial because otherwise it takes a lot longer um or a lot more thought process while you're playing in order to start to get those you know that muscle memory down 
right? And and you'll eventually find kind of what works for you, what doesn't, you know, with improvement, and you'll you'll be better off for it, right? Yep. But uh, yeah, that's essentially that. Uh, I'm gonna end the stream now. Yep.